Hi, everyone. Today, I have a very bare bones presentation. Uh, my name is Prerak Juthani. I'm a second year internal medicine resident at Stanford. But I felt compelled to make this video because I think there's a lot of ups and downs in medicine, specifically, especially in med school. Um, and I think one of the banes of most medical students' existences are um, UWorld, specifically UWorld blocks, and just how hard those can be and the toll that they can take on you mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, studying for step one was in and of itself already so challenging. And now with step one going past fill and step two being such a high stakes exam, I know that dealing with bad outcomes and bad results can be really tough. Um, and so this is a particularly important topic for me, and I'm going on to really tough rotations coming up. But I was just thinking about how much I struggled with step two uh, CK and like how it personally emotionally broke me. I needed to like actually extend the amount of time I spent studying for it. I took, um, I had like one date scheduled and I had to cancel that date and I had to push it back. Um, and I was reflecting on this because now I'm like a second year resident and residency is really freaking hard too. But like, I'm just reflecting back on how little that mattered. And like, what are the things that I did then that I think I'm still doing today that I would want others to kind of gain from? And I'm hoping that this experience is helpful for you. Um, I will say that there's a ton of videos that just show a lot of people doing really well on step one, really well on step two. And while I'm really happy for those individuals, I want to, I like acknowledge the fact that there are people who may not do great. And um, there are times when we all don't do great. And those times are not captured on YouTube, and it's very frustrating that we get this very one-sided reality distortion field on YouTube. I want uh, So this video is intended to kind of break that. Uh, as I said, SEP2CK broke me. I think med school for me was actually quite a good time. I loved it. I loved learning, and I felt that I was really being challenged. And then step two came around, and for the first time in my life um, – well, not the first time in my life, but like for the first time in med school, I felt like just insane amounts of incompetence, just so, so, so much incompetence. Like I was like, I genuinely don't know how I've even made it this far. How did I even get into med school? How how am I even going to be a doctor if I don't even know the answer to half these questions? And so I was supposed to take the exam, I think, in a certain month, and I actually pushed the exam date back by like two or three months. Uh, that's how bad it was. I had to cancel my sub-internship. I had to finagle a lot of things. So I want to tell you what I learned during those times um, in an effort to kind of demystify and make this process transparent. The few things I want to go through today is the fact that I want to acknowledge that now that I'm in residency, I can tell you I've talked to enough people that I know that a bad UR block, not even a bad UR block, a bad score happens to everyone. Uh, sometimes you really just have to change your expectations. You have to snap out of the zone that a bad UR block gets you in. And ultimately, one thing I remember to this day is nothing is more important than you. Don't let a test make you question what makes you 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 right like don't let a question don't let a test make you question if you are going to be a good doctor or the fact that am i even supposed to be in medicine don't let that ever happen so let's kind of go through each of these four things the first one was acknowledging that this happened to everyone when i had this happen to me i wish there was someone who i wish in like many of the youtube videos i was watching someone would have just said like dude, not everything is going to be perfect. Like you will get uh, UWR blocks where you'll get a 40%, multiple UWR blocks where I've gotten 40%. And not everyone has to be perfect all the time. Uh, personally, I'm barely ever holding myself together. And I can tell you I'm starting an inpatient block next week, for example, and I'm still freaked out about it. <laughs> you know, there's always like going to be doubts. And I'm like two years in now and those doubts still for me particularly linger other people maybe have better ways of coping with them and um, i think just acknowledging that you don't have to be perfect all the time and most importantly i think i'm never perfect all of the time uh, and i don't think i'm ever even like average but i think it's okay like be okay with that just make sure you're trying to get better every time i just have gotten better at accepting that i don't have to be perfect um, i can just keep striving to be better the second thing we had talked about was to kind of change my expectations. And so I can tell you like before when you enter med school, you're just always want to be the best. Uh, my expectations are now I, will, I do still want to be the best, but I want to be the best version of myself. I don't want to be the best 
encyclopedic knowledge dictionary ever, which was my early expectations. Now I just want to be the best version of myself. That means making sure I go make time to run, making sure I make time for like my um, my parents, my significant other, or whoever is involved, involved with my life. I want to be a good person to them. And those are my priorities. So my expectations are now different. I don't care about your world nearly as much. I don't, I mean, obviously it's easier to say now, but like even the exams I take, I don't care nearly as much about them because I know that my value is in caring for patients. Um, this third thing we talked about is to snap out of the zone. When you get into a bad UO block, you're going to get a bad score and that puts you in a zone. It puts you into this negative way of thinking. I got a bad score. Now I won't get a good UO world score. I won't get a good step two score. Then I won't get into a good residency. Then I won't be a good doctor. And then if I can't be a doctor, I won't be able to provide for, you know, like it's a cycle. It's a huge cycle. So you have to snap out of your zone. When you get a bad score, it's like anything else that happens. It's like a flat tire on your car. You know, when you have a flat tire, it's very easy to say like, damn it, I hate everything about this. But in the end of the day, it's just a bad event, right? Uh, a bad U world score is a flat tire. It shouldn't impact you nearly as much. Like life is an amalgam of sinusoidal waves and this just happens to be one of your low points. So let's just like pick ourselves up and move on. There's no reason that like a bad score has anything to do with the way you should interact with other people people or the fact that like, oh, I got a bad score. So now I like don't want to eat lunch because I'm just going to study through lunch. No, like just snap out of it. So anytime I had a bad block, it was really hard, but I would actually just like shut off your world and like go on a run or do something totally unrelated to medicine for like even 10 to 15 minutes. And what that does is that it activates different portions of your brain and it removes the cycle that you can get into to get overwhelmed. Um, and so I would splash water on my face, as I said, I'd go take a break, I'd go on a run. Then the whole whole point to me was to remind myself that there was a whole world out there outside of UWorld, which is so much harder to do when you're actually in UWorld world. world. Um, and actually, as a small caveat, when I took step three and step two and step one, in each of the breaks, what I do is I leave Prometric and I go outside. And it's actually really nice because um, you can remind yourself that the world is still out here. Like the world is more than these board exams and these stupid things that we have to do. They're important, but they're not everything. Um, I already talked a bit about changing my expectations and the fact that half of my discontent came from the fact that I was holding myself to expectations that were not realistic. So now my goal was just to get through the UL block. I didn't care about the score and to just learn for the sake of learning. And I was able to just really grow because of it. And so again, to reiterate the four big things and just kind of just go back to the fourth point, you have made it to medical school. You probably have taken step one. You probably have taken all your preclinical tests. You've probably gotten through your rotations. There's nothing that is more important than you. Um, please continue to let your experiences develop the doctor that you're going to be and don't let a stupid test or a bad score on a block make you think that you are anyone different than who you are right i think that was the biggest thing for me i think i literally and i still do to this day when i have really bad experiences question my competence and question who i am uh, when in reality it doesn't really have a bearing it's just one point in time it's a data point being added to an amalgam of a ton of data points i already have and while some data points can be crazy outliers that make me question what the hell i'm doing in my life um, for the most part, it's fine. Everything will go back to the norm and um, you are pretty awesome at the end of the day. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.